Great Hearts Texas families, faculty, and staff, welcome to our series, Championing Our Great Hearted Texas Leaders. I'm here at Great Hearts Irving Middle School with Headmaster Kinnear to talk more about how our mission, model, and culture comes to life in his beautiful sixth through eighth grade community. Headmaster Kinnear, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to Great Hearts and the Great Hearts Irving Middle School that you lead. Yeah, well, I, I came to Great Hearts just because of the beautiful community that we have. Um, I was uh, interviewing in a number of places throughout the country, and I was told this has the best faculty and staff community you could ever find, and it's true. It is true. And what's so beautiful about it is it, it extends not just from the faculty and staff, but then down to our student body. Yeah. And uh, middle school is obviously its own place, and being able to work in a vibrant middle school where the teachers care about the students, our front desk workers care about the students. Everyone is so thrilled to be around these ungainly cults and just kind of seeing them build their legs, build their strength and change. Uh, there's there's a metamorphosis from you know the elementary school into the high school and that change is ongoing in middle school and it's really a beautiful thing. That's amazing, that's amazing. You were a teacher and school leader prior to coming to Great Hearts um, and now there's all these courses, subject areas, Latin, music, science uh, in your school. What's your favorite course that's taught and why? <laughs> You're gonna get me in trouble with this one. Yeah. Uh, favorite course, um, it's probably just because it starts off the middle school in such a unique place, our nature science class. Mm -hmm. So it's this uh, beautiful opening where students get invited into what I'll, I'll like to call natural philosophy. Yes. And what I always tell families is the wonder of that sixth grade is what we get to do in sixth grade is what most people don't get to do until they're doing master's level work in, in the sciences. School. Yeah. yeah. And so the, the students early on get to say, what is the nature of science? What is it to be a scientist? And of course, uh, we sometimes like to use the older term, what is it to be a natural philosopher? What is it to be this explorer of the natural world and to think about it deeply? Yeah where kids study the thing itself and observe it and then get to grapple with the philosophies of science over time. Absolutely. Headmaster Kinnear, our mission animates our organization across all the different facets of it, from operations to culture to recruitment to hiring um, to curriculum. What is one aspect of our mission that matters most to you and your school community? Well, when I think of the, the mission statement, mm -hmm. uh, the, the word that uh, I really like is, in fact, the word pursuit. Mm. It's, it's kind of this pivot word within the, the statement. And you get the cultivation, which is essential and lovely, and then you have goodness, truth, and beauty, but it's actually the word pursuit that enlivens it. Mm. So we cultivate it, but that's preparing the ground. But pursuit is something that you after because you desire it. Yeah. You see it as noble. It's something that you yourself are after, and it's also a thing that doesn't end, meaning our students don't end in sixth grade, they don't end in 12th grade, it's this is for life. And so we give them the pursuit, come join us as we ourselves pursue these things, and it opens up vistas that otherwise would be completely closed off. There's, there's a limited sense of, oh, these things are there. Yeah. No, no, we're pursuing them, yeah. come. We can pursue this together, and it's a beautiful thing to, to have that language of pursuit. And it, it's one that didn't initially hit me. It wasn't until later as I was looking through it, it's like, oh, that is perhaps not the most magical world. I, I don't want to yeah. differentiate, say it's the most magical word, but it's one that enlivens in a particular way. I love that. Um, and in the word of pursuit, there's a few things. One is there is no arriving, it's always there. And there's a piece where we as adults, faculty leaders are also in pursuit. As we think about developing our faculty, what are some of the ways that you help them continue to pursue truth, goodness, and beauty? That's an excellent question. It's uh, just this year in our middle school science, I, I'm apparently on science today, though it could be any, any portion of our curriculum. I do this with music and, and other portions, but just with our science teachers this year, we're reading through a text called Thrifty Science. And it's actually one that uh, I had recommended to a university professor in the middle of COVID 
she read with her entire cohort and they loved it. It was their favorite book that they read that year. And right now our middle school science teachers were reading through it together. And it's this lovely book that starts to explore the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries and how science and natural philosophy were done in that time period. Hmm. And so part of the nature of it is what is it to do science as an individual? What is it to be a human person who still does science? And it explores, of course, that people would have laboratories in their own homes. And it, and it still pivots with the question today. We talk about maker spaces, for example. And so it starts to say, well, what's the relationship of a maker space with science? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, how do we do it at Great Hearts? Mm -hmm. How are we building students so that they too can be like we see in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. We often look at science as being, well, that's the thing that was done. Yeah. And then maybe, I don't know, we do some pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, it's like, no, we can we can also be in these great ages of discovery. Come, let's yeah. do this together. And so our faculty are reading this on their own time. Yeah. Yeah. Said, so, hey, we're going to read it. It's a great example of, of the word pursuit. I love that you highlighted that um, and how we need to pursue truth, goodness, and beauty as adults and model that for our students and then guide our students to pursue it as well. So, so I really love that focus on the, the action word, the verb of what is happening in our mission. When you are recruiting families, when you're talking about potential great heart students, I imagine the question of what is a classical school comes up quite a bit. How do you explain that to a family? So what is a classical school? One of the things that I enjoy when I get to answer that question is in part to first see what they think about it and then to engage with them in a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways in which we teach classically is the dialectic, yes. is the conversation. Yeah. And so I like to approach it uh, starting from there. But one of the things that is noble about our curriculum is that we look at the whole human person. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is an artist. Everyone is someone who can learn music. We actually want to say, hey, you are an embodied person. What is it to do these things? Everyone can do physical education. And certainly people have different strengths and giftings. But to be classically educated is to take on and say, who are you as a person who gets to go enjoy the world around you? gets to pursue these things and isn't limited perhaps by something that you liked when you were six mm -hmm. or when you were 12. What happens with these students is they get to see things that they never would have been able to explore before. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I do kind of like art. Mm -hmm. I do kind of like mathematics. It wasn't until I got to Euclidean geometry and then all of a sudden I love mathematics. Yeah. All these different touch points within the classical education allows the students to approach all these different topics from different areas, but also to explore deeply, what is it to be human? Earlier, we were talking about sixth grade science, and there's many curriculum areas that I'm sure you love, as do I. What are some other parts of the middle school curriculum that you think are truly beautiful? Yeah. One of the things that I really love is our approach to friendship and getting to view these different friendships in the curriculum. And so uh, one is The Hobbit, where you have just this straight camaraderie and going on an adventure, and it's just glorious. And then, and that's in sixth grade. But then in seventh grade, we, we look at Julius Caesar. And so there's an interesting dynamic of friendship there. And then in, in eighth grade, uh, in, in our school, we, we read The Chosen. And the year opens with The Chosen. And the thing about The Chosen, I know we read it in middle school, and some people read it in high school. I first encountered it in college, in fact. It's adult literature, but it is about youth. And it's about a beautiful friendship that starts off with complete conflict and then grows into such a place where the friends can actually speak against one another not because they're fighting, but because they care so much for the other that they speak to them as them. Wow. And what else can we give to middle school students? We hear in America, oh, middle schoolers are terrible and, and all they do is, you know, bully each other. Or they don't like each other. And this, this is just a wild age. And they're not that way. 
our students definitely aren't that way. And yet when they get to see this friendship in The Chosen, which is one that starts essentially in middle school and then grows into high school and really into college, they get to see a maturing friendship yeah. and what it is to be a real friend, not simply someone who's like, oh, well, we play soccer together, that's why we're friends, yeah. which is fine and lovely. But what is a higher friendship as well? And that's something our curriculum helps them to see. I think that's a great example also of how our curriculum explicitly connects to our culture. So when we think about our, our mission, our model, our curriculum, what is how does that shape the culture of Great Hearts Irving Middle School? And what kind of traditions do you have to continue to cultivate that pursuit? Yeah, yeah. One of the lovely things uh, that we have, and I think this is just um, a good way of continuing it, is in fact our physical education. Hmm. And I say that because uh, our students learn to control their bodies in space and time. And they also get this in choir. Hmm. And so they learn what it is to, oh, I have a physical body and it occupies space, which is actually a strange thing uh, sometimes for young people. <laughs> like, oh, right. <laughs> uh, other people exist and, and, I, and I bump into them. Um, and so they start to learn those things through how do I control my body? How do I use it? And how does it relate to others? And of course, that again is, what is that for culture? Mm. Now, that's, that's not the only reason we do PE. <laughs> it's not the primary reason we do music. Mm. And yet those things are part of it. They're mm. still a part of that as part of the whole. Uh, one of the things that I really love about our middle school is we do etiquette. And so we teach our students to dance, which is just lovely. But we open in sixth grade with them learning uh, to write thank you notes. And they've probably covered this already in the lower school. And yet we want to return to it. And for students who are new to us, it's a way of welcoming them yeah. into our community. And the students really enjoy it. And they're able to do it well. And so we have different uh, moments. We did the uh, bibliotech and arts. So we taught them what it was to be a, a civilized human being in a library. Yes. And uh, in eighth grade, at the very end, we do uh, an etiquette lesson on how to behave in a banquet because we have an eighth grade promotion ceremony that they all come to and they all sit at this big table and they're served by uh, some of our high school scholars. And it's this beautiful event and they're all dressed up. We had a, a gentleman last year who, who came in salmon trousers and said, Mr. Kinner, you inspired me. And of course this year I got to return the favor because I bought this suit <laughs> because I did not have any salmon trousers. I was like, well, if I could inspire him, he can inspire me. That's great. But it's one of these, you know, little little points in the day where we teach them etiquette and yet it comes out in so many different aspects of the community. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Teaching students to be whole humans, right? Not just not just their mind, but their their whole self. Absolutely. So building on that Student achievement, student learning obviously matters a lot. And we have an incredibly rigorous curriculum and exceptionally well-qualified teachers and pedagogical methods. But student achievement is not the whole. Student formation, the broader picture of a, of a child, of a forming human, is what we are pointed toward and what we are focused on. How do you think about student formation at Irving Middle School? One of the things that uh, I was reading recently was a study that noted that in certain schools, they focus just on intellectual virtue. And then what would happen is the students would find themselves in a different context where those things didn't fit quite as well. And they're like, here's the, here's the way to succeed in our school. And then it was limited to here's how you succeed in our school. Hmm. And what we are working towards as part of this whole human is, well, what's your intellectual formation, yes, but what's your moral formation? What's your physical formation? And when we are able to look at it that way and say, okay, what is it to be just? And I, I sometimes tell even parents, and I, and I think this is true, that in middle school, the, the classical virtue that you run to the most trouble with is in fact justice. Hmm. And it's because you start to become hyper aware of it. And so you get really aware of justice, and that's great, but it's justice for you, <laughs> which is kind of particular. And, and the classical virtue of justice is, in fact, justice for another. It's not for you, it's for others. Mm. And so in middle school, they start to realize a little bit more, and it's okay, it's me and my friend group. And what we get to work through in middle school is say, no, 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 justice is for another. 
It's for your teachers, for your classmates who maybe you aren't as close with. And so we get to work through that and open that to them. And they start to then have a full idea of what it is to be just, what it is to be virtuous in that sense in the world. And it's such an amazing thing to be able to work with students through those virtues and to have those calm conversations with them. So much of my time is, is spent uh, just having students come in, say, Mr. Kner, I'm having this struggle with a teacher. How do I work through it? And they come back two weeks later like, Mr. Kner, I did what you told me, and it worked. And it's just <laughs> part of that maturing process. But those are the conversations we have. And it's, it's a great thing to see a middle school grow that way. That's amazing. Um, as a former eighth grade teacher myself and the ninth grade teacher, I am especially fond of these critical transition years, right? Um, and so you have the only sixth through eighth grade academy in Great Hearts. That's unique in and of itself. Tell us more about what makes Great Hearts Irving Middle School unique. One of the things that makes our middle school unique is that for our school, our eighth graders function a bit like a 12th grader would in a normal like six or 12 operating upper school. Mm. And so because we have our separate school, even though we are part of still a six or 12 academy, so they get to kind of have a both and in mm. fact. So our, our sixth or eighth graders get to have the high schoolers love on them. And yet our eighth graders get to develop as leaders because they are uh, the leaders in the building. And so they get to definitively influence our culture as eighth graders in ways that they would normally kind of get lost in the shuffle, blending in with a ninth grader, or at least just kind of around and, and even one of our uh, normal great hearts, Texas schools. And so it's kind of a lovely thing that our eighth graders get this distinct position that allows them to see what it is to be culture influencers. Yeah. I love the idea of being able to call your eighth graders to be the best versions of themselves, right? Um, what are some of the events or perhaps traditions that you do at Irving Middle to really highlight that eighth grade year? Yeah, a thing that we do to, to highlight the eighth grade year, and it we, we do it a little bit as well with the sixth and the seventh, uh, but one of the things is we have a leadership program that we call the Tribune Program. Hmm. And uh, this year, we I launched it last year. This year, we did a little bit of an upgrade so that now our, our retreat, we have them come in and we do an escape room. Okay. And so they get to bond over this, but it's one, the bonding experience is the fun part. But the real thing is, how do we build a culture for our grade? What are the strengths that we can continue to grow in? And then they do a class project, which serves the broader community. And it's a really neat way where we're able to mentor several throughout the year. And so we rotate uh, during the year, we have a changeover. And so between sixth all the way through eighth grade, over 50% of our campus could participate. And we really view it as a leadership opportunity, a, a leadership training environment, not simply a leadership recognition. In middle school, they're growing, they're developing. And so we say, you're a child of goodwill. Come on, let's, let's train you what it is to be a great hearted leader. I love that. I love that. Headmaster Kinner, thank you so much for telling us more about your campus today and all the work uh, and intentionality you all are pouring into creating this great hearted middle school environment. Great Hearts Texas families, faculty and staff, thank you for joining me and Headmaster Kinner today as we highlight the amazing work of Irving Middle School. Join us in championing our great hearted Texas leaders every week as we go across the state and see our mission at work. Thank you.